atmosphere of worship. We create an atmosphere of praise. We come to give you glory tonight, Jesus. We come to lift up your name. Come on, say we pour. We pour out our best for you. 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 Come on, stay right there. Come on, say it. We pour out our best for you. We pour out our best for you. Yes, we do, Lord. Come on, I feel worship in this room tonight. Come on. We pour out our best for you. 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 Come on, somebody give him your best praise right now. Come on, somebody raise a hallelujah in this room. Come on, lift up your worship. Come on, create an atmosphere. Come on, create an atmosphere. Come on, right now with your worship, create an atmosphere of praise. Come on, that your God can ride in on. Come on, create an atmosphere of worship right now with your praise. Father, we raise a hallelujah in this room. We raise a hallelujah up in this place tonight, God. Lord, you are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Father. Come on, let's put those hands together. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah Come on, church, help me say. I raise it. Yeah, y'all, come on. My weapon is, my weapon is a melody. Come on, raise it up in this room. I raise Come on. Heaven, come fight for me. Come on, we're going to sing. I'm going to sing.
to sing a little louder. Come on, what we're doing right now is we're making a collective sound. Come on, that as we raise it up together, you see there's power and there's overcoming power by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Come on, if you've got a testimony in this place, I need to hear you roar a little louder in this room. Come on, so what you're doing is you're putting victory into the atmosphere that as you raise a hallelujah, for somebody who come for victory, you're speaking victory into their life. Come on, so we're gonna sing. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Come on, church. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. I gotta sing a little louder. Will somebody roar a little bit louder in this room come on come on take a second right here and just raise a hallelujah in this place come on in the middle of the storm in the middle of the mystery in the middle of your circumstance come on raise your hallelujah in the middle of this in the middle of the storm no matter what it looks like no matter what it feels like we raise a hallelujah Jesus we give you our worship Stay right there, Virgil. We give you our worship. We give you our worship. We give you our worship. We 
give you a worship. I heard it said like this today that that if the enemy is the prince of the air, <laughs> that as you begin to breathe and speak, and as you begin to let that hallelujah come out of you, every territory that he has tried to occupy in the air, come on, what you're doing is you're occupying his territory with your praise. I need some people to occupy some territory right now. Come on, come on. I need some people to occupy some territory. If he's the prince of the air, I need you to breathe life. I need you to speak life. Let your countenance, let your life speak. Let your hallelujah speak and get some territory back. No, 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 no. See, see, you would be worshiping louder. You'd be roaring louder because the space is not his. The space is the Lord's. The air is the Lord's. Everything in here is the Lord's. Somebody roar a little bit louder. Take some territory back with your praise. Take some territory back with your worship. So we take our territory back. Woo! Every space that the enemy has occupied is now occupied with my praise. Every space that means your home, in your car, in your marriage, I wish you would just breathe some life on it right now. For every spirit that has tried to infect for every spirit that has tried to destroy, take some territory back. Take it back with a worship. Come on, fill up this place right now. Fill up this place with your worship in this room. Come on, activate the spirit of the Lord on the inside of you. Come on, young people. Come on. Don't wait till Warrior Fest. Start right now. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Push a little bit right now, church. I know it's Wednesday. I know it's Wednesday. But in the midst of your situation, in the midst of your season, come on. Come on. As you breathe, come on. Every breath you take, you see the enemy. That's why he wants your breath. Because he wants to occupy your territory. He wants to occupy your territory. But as you breathe, you're, you're, you're proclaiming, not in my house, not in my space, but I breathe life. I breathe life, Jesus. Come on, take it back right now. I feel a take back spirit in the room tonight. Come on, take it back with your worship. So we give you a worship. So we give you a worship. So we give you a worship, Jesus. to slip your hands up in the air. Come on, we're going to teach you a new one. Worship you for me. So we say, Here's my worship. 
As long as we're breathing, as long as we're breathing, we will give you praise. We will give you worship. You are worthy. You are holy. You are righteous. You are a way maker. You are a way maker. Come on, lift up your worship in this room. Come on, use your breath right now. If you got breath, lift up your worship. If you got breath, lift up your praise. Because you are worthy. You are worthy. Come on, lift it up, church. Lift it up. Come on, I feel a worship in this room right now. Come on, lift it up. Lift it up. Come on, soak in it right now. Soak in it right now. Come on, you've created an atmosphere for him to work in. Come on, let him work. Let him work. Let him work. Let him work. Come on, church, stir it up. Come on, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Come on. Come on, push a little bit. Push through, push through. Come on, young people. Come on, young people. Young people, slip those hands up. Come on, don't wait, don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. Don't wait. Come on, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Come on, there's a worship. There's a true worship invading this room right now. There's a true worship invading this room right now. We're going to worship in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth, we're going to worship. Spirit and in truth, we're gonna worship. Spirit and in truth, we're gonna worship. Use your breath, use your breath. Come on, there's a heavenly sound in this room. Come on, stir up the living waters on the inside of you. Stir up the living waters on the inside of you. If you got breath, you got worship. If you got breath and you got worship, he's been too good. He's been too good. You've been a healer, you've been a provider, you've been a way maker, you've been my mind regulator. Come on, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Come on, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Come on, you're breaking down walls. Come on, come on, you're breaking down walls right now. Come on, with your worship, with your praise. Come on, you're tearing into barriers. Come on, every barrier that the enemy has set up to try to distract you from getting your breakthrough in this room. Come on, come on, you're tearing through walls, you're tearing through barriers, you're tearing through distractions, things that want to separate you from breakthrough. Come on, but lift up your worship. Here's my worship, all of my We see my all of my worship. Here's my word, all of my we see my all of my. I will not be silent. I come on, church, declare it. Shape you and slow. Sing that one more time. I will and I will not be silent. I will always worship you. 
as long as I So with your hands raised in this room one more time come on just begin to open up your mouth right here come on we're getting ready to transition but as we're as we're getting ready to transition come on one more time come on let your worship fill this place let your worship fill this room we give you our worship right now Jesus we prepare the way we prepare the way we prepare the way for you jesus so father we thank you in this place We thank you for your presence that's in this room. We thank you, Lord, that it's sweet. Woo. Come on, it's tangible in this room tonight. Come on, his glory. Father, we thank you, Lord, for riding in on our praises. And we create this atmosphere, Father, for you. So, Lord, let rivers of healing waters flow into this place tonight. Lord, let your healing waters cleanse and flow right now. Hmm. Let it disrupt every bit of darkness. Father, dispatch your ministering angels in this room now. Father, but we declare and we decree that as we worship tonight, Father, Lord, that miracles will be in this room. That healing and breakthrough will be in this room. So God, do what only you can do. And you're the best at it. <laughs> Nobody can comfort like you. Nobody can mend the broken heart like you. So continue to work in this place, Father. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we give you the praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Come on, somebody put your hands together one time. Come on, I think we can do better than that. Come on, as we're going back to our seat, come on. Let's lift up a worship. He is worthy. He is worthy of our praise. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. It's good to see you in this place tonight. Y'all, you know the drill. We haven't done it in a while. So stand back up to your feet. Take a moment in this atmosphere. Hug somebody's neck. Love on them. And let them know that it's good to see them. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. There's already just a sweet uh, presence in this place. I'm, I'm just, man, it's so good. It was, it was good tonight because I was able to 
I knew, I knew that the enemy wanted to try to. And it was like clockwork as soon as we started declaring against his territory of the air. I think my whole phone or my ears just completely went out, so I didn't hear anything, but praise the Lord. Anyway, we got some territory back, amen. Amen. If you're a first-time visitor in this place, if you can raise your hand, we just want to take a moment and just welcome you. Amen. Good to see you right there in the back. Anybody else? First-time visitor? Amen. Come on, Restoring Hope Church. We can do better than that. Thank you for being in service with us tonight. We appreciate you. Amen. If we got an usher handy, if there's an usher, if you can just keep your hand up. Our ushers want to come by and place something in your hand. Amen. Just to say thank you for being with us tonight. Amen. How many is excited about what God's going to do in this place tonight? Amen. 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 Um, we're just going to get right into it just because I, I know that God has, has something that he wants to do. And so if you want to go ahead and prepare your, your tithe and your offering. Amen. Uh, thank you for bearing with us in the... Uh, in, in, the, the foyer out there where uh, we're constant it's just uh, a couple weeks ago we had some uh, minor difficulties I'll say that we had to deal with and uh, and so we, we're going to solve those once and for all we're going to solve those once and for all so thank you for bearing with us in the midst of that and um, and so if you um, are if you didn't get a chance to connect uh, and get to see the announcements um, you can get with one of our ushers um, they're the big guys wearing uh, Mitch raise your hand Mitch right there Mitch John David in the back right there you can get with one of them and get a uh, get an information card and it has all of the uh, announcements and things that that's going on here and we got a lot amen we got a lot that's coming up in this season and so uh, but anyways as you're getting ready for uh, your the tithe and the offering um, how are we going to do that tonight Mitch you just want to bring them up bring it up tonight okay um i was uh i was before service the lord led me to the scripture and it's second corinthians 4 and 13 not first corinthians but second corinthians 4 and 13 and i want to read it to you if i can find it amen but having the same spirit of faith according to that which is written somebody say i believed and say, therefore, I did speak. Now, let's say this together. We also believe. Therefore, also we speak. And so as I begin to think about that, and that we've been in this season here at the church, and our pastors have been declaring it, and, and some of our elders have been declaring it, but that we're living in a season that whatever you're going to speak is whatever you're going to get. And that whatever you sow out, whatever comes out of you, whether if it's, let's just take it away from the money for a second. If it's anger, if it's jealousy, bitterness, whatever it may be, guess what kind of offering you get to reap? But I was reading this and, and we're living in such a season right now that, man, I don't want anything to come from this right here. That number one doesn't glorify the Lord and that doesn't edify the church. Meaning that let everything that I speak, let it be life because I don't know about you, but I want some life. Let everything that I speak be, even though that the odds are stacked up against me. I heard somebody say it like this today that the results of what it looks like and the results of what it seems like is only something that God can turn into a testimony. That God can use. I see the results of cancer. Pastor Amanda felt it on her chest. I see the results. And I thank you for those results because I know the results aren't final. I know the results that if I if I stand firm and if I give whenever it's easy and I give whenever it hurts I give on the mountain I give in the valley that I know that somewhere somehow some way that whatever the results God's gonna use it for a testimony 
Now, if you're ready for a testimony, and if you're ready to be a witness, I want you to hold your offering up. I want you to hold your tithe up. Because this seed, and put it, listen, listen, here's one thing that I know that our pastors have taught, and our elders have taught, whatever you need right now, speak it. Put it into existence. Put a name to it. If you need something, put a name to it. No matter what the results are like, no matter if you're in debt up to your eyeballs. I heard today on the, uh, on the radio that there, is a, uh, that there was a church, and I can't wait to hear the testimony of this, that there was a church that raised X amount of dollars and that they just began one by one paying off people's medical bills. One by one, $100,000 here, $20,000 here, $200 here. Listen, whatever you need, come on. Pastor, he was jokingly say it, but he was serious. Come on, there's some cows getting ready to fall out of, of heaven's windows because he owns a cattle on a thousand hills and there is nothing, there is no debt too big, there is no sickness too big, there is no situation too big that, that the results that you see in front of you that God cannot change. So Father, we bless this offering. And we thank you, Lord, that the results are not final. But God, we thank you that you have the last say. And so God, we speak, Lord, right now, Lord, to every seed, to every offering, Lord, to those, God, who, are, who the odds are stacked up against them, to those, Lord, who are on the mountaintop. Father, we thank you, Lord, that this seed, God, will be a testimony. Lord, God, that we're going to be able, Jesus. Father, Lord, that as we sow, God, Lord, that whatever we sow tonight, God, Lord, that we sow believing, Lord, that this will help your church, not just Restoring Hope Church, not just this body of believers, but God, that as we sow, God, we believe, Lord, that this is going to go out into the greater Nashville area, Father. Lord, that it's going to go into our jobs, that it's going to go back into our families. Lord God, that we're going to be able to testify that because of this seed that we gave, that a family member came to the knowledge of who you are. That because of this seed, Lord, that as we gave in faith, Lord, that the results of the sickness that we see in front of us, God, that we're going to go back to the doctor and we're going to get a clean bill of health. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you own, Lord, a cattle on a thousand hills and that there is nothing too big and that there is nothing too hard. So we speak to the seed and we call it blessed and we prepare the ground, God. Lord, that it's not going to fall upon gravel, Lord, that it's not going to fall upon bad ground. But God, we open up the ground with our praise. We open up the ground with our faith. And Lord, as we sow and we, as we believe in faith, God, we believe we're going to reap. Lord, not so that we can just be selfish and hold it in. Because, Lord, we love to get. Oh, but God, greater it is to give. So, God, help us. Lord, that as we receive, help us to give. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We praise you. And we call this seed blessed. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said amen amen you can you can stand and you can go ahead and come to the front and you can give your offering and your tithe tonight amen also if you don't have a way to give uh, an envelope and you didn't bring your card don't worry they're showing on the screen you can also give by the way of your cell phone amen
after you've given, would you just stand back up on your feet for the reading of his word? Thank you, Jesus. Turn with me to the book of Exodus chapter number 47. Verse 9, 47 and 9. Uh, 47 and 9. Ezekiel, I'm sorry. Ezekiel, forgive me. I'm human. Ezekiel, I'm sorry, guys. While you're looking for it, would you let everybody know you appreciate their gifting tonight? Would you let them know? I just want to sing a little chorus of this. For your glory. Do you know that one? I will do anything just to see you. To behold you as my king. Lift your hands and say, For I want to be where you are Cause healing is where you are Joy is where you are Your peace is where you are Say be where you are anybody got that heart tonight healing is where you are your river is where you are joy is where you are and I want to be where you are cause peace is where Joy is where you are. Love is where you are. Sing it one more time. For your glory. I will. Come on, lift your heart to him. Say, just to see. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. And you alone are my heart's desire.
worship thee. Sing that one more time, the chorus. Blessing for a moment, and I long to worship, to worship the Lord, and I long to always worship, no matter how I feel. I will worship you, Lord. I will worship. I will. I will always worship thee. Even when I'm weak in my body, I will worship. I will always worship. I will always worship. I come to worship. I come to worship thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you put your hands together and bless his name? Ezekiel chapter number 9 47 verse 9 it says and it shall be somebody say it shall be that every living thing that moves every living thing that moves it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the rivers go will live Everything that moves toward the river will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish because of these waters, because these waters go there. For they will be healed. Somebody shout healed. And everything will live wherever the river goes. Everything will live. Say that with me. Everything will live. Say that again. Everything will live. Say it again. Everything will live because you go there. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I just said. Everything will live because you walked into the room. Some of you still ain't got it. When you walk in a room, everything will live. Not I, but Christ. There's waters on the inside. And everything that lives, everything that moves, everything that breathes will live when somebody connects with you. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. There's a divine connection that is happening even right now as we're worshiping Him. As many waters are converging together, everything will live. Every, this house is filling up with healing streams. I said, everything will live. There's a great multitude. There's a harvest. I still see it. And they're going to live and not die. And they will declare the living works of a living God. Come on, somebody. Everything will live because there's some waters. There's some living, giving streams. Everything will live. Somebody say, everything will live. Come on, say it again. Everything will live in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Wow. I, 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 uh, yes. I love it. I love it. We went on a little journey this, this, this uh, 24 hour deal spring day, spring break day with our family. We went to Gatlinburg and hung out with our kids. And I'm telling you, we had an incredible time. Family first, right? And we had an incredible time and, and uh, went to eat and probably ate a little more than normal. And uh, we went to this place. It was uh, a little farm, a barn place. 
Great ideas there, by the way. Um, and breakfast was incredible. Pancakes that thick. No kidding. And uh, so I ate some of them. And I got me this big old beef thing with gravy on top with sausage in it. And eggs. And all kinds of other stuff. And I'm telling you what, it messed this old boy up. Because I've been eating good, you know what I mean? And so I, just a few minutes ago, I'm just going to be real with you, I had a real bad headache, and I know why. Because I overdid it and I had to pray. But I'm thankful that everywhere the river runs, there's healing. Come on, somebody. And so I just, want to, I just want to focus on this for a few minutes. I'll try not to take a lot of your time. And I honestly, I have no preconceived plan tonight. You know, God normally will show you kind of how things will go and even show you pictures of what to do. There's been times I've been sitting in service and God will show me a picture and somebody to grab. And... Um, and what about Sunday? Anybody still riding that wave? Lord, I am. It, it, but this, this particular scripture has been one from the birthing of this, this process has been about the water. Um, when we used to come in here, we'd come in here on um, uh, 5 a.m. prayer meetings and God began to show us pictures of water. Uh, and I know that he, I even saw rivers up in these altars one day. I was praying and I saw rivers and flowing through these aisles. And everybody that jumped in and, and stepped in, they were healed and transformed. And God began to show me snapshots of yeah. destiny. And so I'm, I'm, I get excited when I talk about the water. Even our logo, which is not up here now, but we took them down. It's a drop of water. And each one of you are a drop of water. Yeah. How many knows that your drop can create ripple effects? Yeah. Yeah. And so water is intriguing to me because everything that water touches and everything that consumes water will live. And so what this scripture is telling us that this is uh, this present day river in us and is symbolic to you and I of the river of the Holy Ghost, the river of the Spirit. And in this river, there's healing. In this river, even tonight, as this word is going forth, the river's going forth to back up every word that is proceeded out of a vessel such as Caleb through worship, Courtney, all of the singers. They're not just singing melodies and songs. They're singing the word of God. And when the Word of God goes forth, the river of God backs everything that the Word is speaking. And sometimes the, the river will issue out of you and bring forth breakthrough to somebody that you didn't even know was taking place or transpiring, but because you said, Hallelujah, chains broke off your neighbor. That's the river that's on the inside of you. And so this present day river is symbolic of the person of the Holy Ghost. And this river tonight is bringing healing. Somebody shout healing. healing. This river tonight, I go ahead and declare before we get into the word, is bringing resources. I speak it again that there's resources, endless resources in this river. Come on somebody. Psalms 1 and 1 through 3, I'm not going to speak it out. I could declare the whole thing because it's my favorite verse. But it says that there are trees that are planted by rivers of living waters. That means that everything you need is in the stream. Come on, this stream's supernatural. It's not this dimension. We have to start thinking of a different dimension. It's a dimension that we literally have not tapped into yet. But everything that you need is in these resources, the river of living, giving streams coming from the throne of grace. The moving of this river brings things to us such as breakthrough. 
This river brings breakthrough. This river tears down barriers. This river will knock things out of the way that's trying to hinder you. This river, the current of this river, will knock out every distraction that's trying to detour you. This river, the current is so strong that, that it will remove barriers, that it will break down walls. This river even shifts things out of the way. They're shifting. Even your season will shift when the river's flowing. Come on, somebody. There's changing that happens. Your life begins to change when you begin to, to, to move closer to this river. There's a change that happens in you. There's a renewal that will happen in you. There's restoration that comes from this river. There's even birthing that comes from the river. And the Feast of Tabernacles represent God's provision. The Feast of Tabernacles we can read in 2 Chronicles chapter number 7 and verse 1 through 10. I'm just going to go through a little bit of it. It says that when Solomon had finished praying that fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings and the burnt sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Somebody shout filled. You know what happened on Sunday? The glory of the Lord filled the the temple and it happened just like that when the praises go up the glory comes down and the glory of the Lord filled the temple and the priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory was so strong the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord and we read on and we see when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory was in the place and the glory of the Lord was in the temple and and they 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 couldn't do anything else but just bow their face to the, the Bible says the pavement. They was outside and they were bowing their face to the pavement. Do it again, oh God. That the glory of the Lord is issuing out of here so strong that people just surrender on the pavement outside. That they just surrender their will to His will. That they just surrender their habits and their haunts. And, and, and they give everything to God because there's such a glory. I'm telling you, it can happen. If we get ourselves positioned for the glory, there is nothing that will be impossible to believers. The Lord on the temple showed His glory and showered His glory in this place, in this particular scripture. And they bowed on the pavement and worship and praised the Lord saying, For He is good, for His mercy endures forever. So as a blood-watched, Holy Ghost-filled believer, your Feast of Tabernacles in life, your Feast of Tabernacles should be in life should be the life of God. Your Feast of Tabernacles should be giving and receiving the Holy Ghost. In other words, the river. See, we dam up the river too much. It's time to stop damming up your river. Come on, somebody. Because it's easy to let it flow when everything else is flowing. But what about when nobody else is flowing? Because you could be the first issuing that brings breakthrough. You could be the hallelujah that brings revival. So we're going to have to allow that river. Our Feast of Tabernacles is allowing, is giving and receiving this Holy Spirit. In other words, the river's flowing and we step into the flow and the flow steps into us. The river is in us. The living waters are out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. So it's coming into us and it's flowing out of us. And everything that river begins to touch begins to be delivered, set free, healed, blinded eyes become open. Deaf ears are unlocked. That because the river that is coming into you is flowing out of you and is creating an atmosphere of living, giving streams. The river is living. The river is flowing. And so uh, we have to flow with where it's flowing. We have to go where it's going. We have to be directed by this river. We have to allow nothing to distract the current of the flow of this river. For our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the river of God is on the inside of us. How many would understand that you are a vessel. And there's a river on the inside of you. And when you're full and when you're filled. Uh, that river 
flows out of you, it spills out of you and starts getting on other stuff. It starts getting on some sin next to you. It starts getting on some sickness next to you. It starts getting on carnality next to you. And the next thing you know, your neighbor don't know what hit them, but you've been splashing in the river of living water, and, and now it's jumping off on them, and they don't even know what's happening. But now the conviction power of the Holy Ghost is getting all over them, and their mind's starting to change. And the next thing you know, they're coming up here and dipping in the river, river themselves. So there's a river coming in and there's a river going out. The river of God is his vessel. Is The Bible says that you receive power after that the Holy Ghost came upon you and, and, and you shall become witnesses unto, unto them both in Jerusalem and Judea and all Samaria and to the other most parts of the earth because there was something that came not only in you but upon you. There is a fiery flow that God is releasing. There's an outpouring of God's power that he's releasing in this day. Somebody shout now. now. It's happening now. We can be a part of it if we desire to be. There's a fiery flow of God's power that has been released and is being carried by surrendered folk. By those who are intimate with Jesus, not just in this place, but in your place. Those who are uh, refuse to change to please the world, to please a, 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 a denomination, to please a religious folk, but they say, I'm going to listen to what heaven is speaking, and I'm going to declare what heaven is speaking. They are aligning to listen to heaven. They are positioning to listen to heaven and the sounds of heaven. And they're declaring what they're hearing and they're speaking out the truth. And he shall do a new thing that says the Lord. Shall it not spring forth now? Now somebody needs to understand that we're not on yesterday's glory anymore. But God is doing a brand new thing and he's doing it right now. Now, I wish I had some people who truly believe that right now. That even, even in the midst that you're, all the, the people you're around, he's doing a new thing in them. He's doing a new thing in them. Guess what? He's doing a new thing in you. And it's about to spring forth. It's about to bud. There's fruit coming out of this. Your season is shifting. Things are moving out of your way. Distractions are getting out of your way. Because what is issuing, issuing from heaven is going to issue from you to bring miracle signs and wonders. Somebody give God praise for the river. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so... We're not going to change just because it's the end thing to change. We're going to do what he says to do. Because God is releasing a great outpouring of his glory. And he's empowering. And he's pouring into and empowering those representing not this dimension, but another dimension. Three people. See, you got to know where you come from. You got to know whose you are. Because we're not of this world. We're in this world. But we're not of this world. So our source is not this source. This, the, anything that we can touch, feel, see, hear in this natural realm is not our source. Boy, that just messes everything up because we want to see it. We want to control it. We want to touch it. We want to see it before we can believe it. But the Bible is telling you and I that we walk by faith and not by what we can see. I walk by faith. I walk in a righteous rhythm, not because I see it, but because I believe it. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Come on, somebody. I didn't see Jesus when I got saved with my natural eyes. And people can call you crazy all day long. I believe in somebody I have never seen before. But can I tell you something? I've seen everything he can do. I've seen the lame walk. I've seen the dumb talk. I've seen the blinded eyes open. I've seen deaf ears open up. I've seen him heal the sick. I've seen him uproot cancer from bodies. I've seen him put marriages back together. I've seen him put families back together. Come on, somebody. I didn't see him but I believe everything that's in this book. 
So the principle is not any different for your miracle, for your, for your infilling. Well, it's just a gift that certain people can get. Well, that's right. If you want it, it's available to you. It's a gift. How many agree with that? How many is full of the Holy Ghost? You received it because He gave it, right? You received the blood that He shed for you because He freely gave it to you. It's no different with the Holy Ghost. If you want it, you can have it. He has freely given it unto you. And you don't have to tarry for it. Because if you're going to tarry, you got to go to Jerusalem. Come on, somebody. Because if we're going to do everything that that says, you don't have to tarry because it's already here. All you got to do is receive what He's... I wish I had some Holy Ghost filled believers who knock between the eyes with the Holy Ghost and you haven't been the same since. I want a witness in this place. Come on. That it changed you, that it stirred you, that it stirred your destiny, that it stirred your future. Somebody give God a praise for the holy living stream that's on the inside, moving on the outside. Come on. Brother Lee had it all over him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Sunday he couldn't contain himself because when it's in you, it will be notice on you come on and so you can receive a gift if you believe salvation the Holy Ghost your healing it's all a gift and it's all in the river so your feast of tabernacles is releasing this river and receiving this river God is releasing an outpouring on ambassadors there coming from a different dimension God has called you from another place you, as a matter of fact you were there before you was here before you were born before you were formed in your in your mother's womb in your mother's belly he created you handpicked you carved you out for a for a destiny for a purpose he had a plan for you a hope and a future did you just hear that he has a hope and a future for you and it's not for you to be broke down, busted, and disgusted and sick all the days of your life. Come on, somebody. He wants to heal you tonight, and there's healing rivers in this place. And he wants to move you from this place to his destiny, to his future, to his purpose. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Let me just mess the devil all up. He didn't want you to sit around and be poor all the time. No, we're, we're from a heavenly kingdom. I'm talking about a kingdom where there's streets of gold walls of jasper gates of pearl the crystal river that's flowing in the city listen he said thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so he doesn't want us to be poor all the time i'm so sick of that everybody said well if you're not poor you can't serve christ that's not that's not the truth he is a king he had resources for his ministry Come on, preachers. And, he, and here's another thing, just to, just to make the devil real mad. The Bible says that he wished above all things. Help me. So what's that mean for you and I? That he wants to bless you. He don't want to cuss you out. He don't, yeah, there's a time to suffer with him, but there's also a time to glory with him. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. We're not, we're, we've been suffering. We're going to suffer. And yes, you must be in a position of humility in his glory. But there's a place in his glory he wants you to be. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be positioned. He wants you to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. How can you lay hands on if you are not positioned right? So we have to be humble, but we also have to understand that you have the power in an earthen vessel to raise the dead. You have the power against the enemy. You have the authority, come on somebody, against principalities. And all you got to do is stir it up on the inside of you. The living stream is in you. I don't know where that's all coming from, but it's Holy Ghost. God is releasing a great outpouring through you. Stop looking in the sky. It's in you. Touch somebody, say it's you. You are the great outpouring. My God. 
You are the heavenly citizen. You are the ambassador fully equipped to subdue the powers of darkness. You are the ambassadors to shipwreck the strategies of hell. And to release the kingdom of God in the earth as it is in heaven. You are in this world, but you're not of this world. And now your attractions have changed and your desires have changed and you have changed. You shouldn't be the same person you used to be yesterday. Because we're progressing in God. Come on, somebody, help me preach. You're progressing in God. I'm not the same person I was yesterday. Because there's a lesson to be learned day after day after day. Come on. If you want deeper waters, you got to keep stepping. If you want deeper waters, you got to keep stepping. If you want more than ankle, you got to get to knee. Come on, somebody. If you want more than knee, you got to get to your waist. But I see professional swimmers in this place. Come on. Do I have any swimmers who want all that God has for you? Press down, shaking together, and running over shall. Come on, give God praise because you want all that he has for you. You want all his suffering, but you also want all the glory. Not not your glory, but his glory covering you to equip you. Those who refuse to change to please others will miss it. We, We are of this world, but we're not. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. These are they who hunger is what God is. They're unapologetic. I I, I read a uh, book years ago. I started to read the book. I didn't read it all. But and there are some there are some different folk out there. There Some John the Baptist is out there that are the barbarian way. They don't care about religion. They've gotten to the place of surrender. That they're not moved by people. By the famous and the rich. Because they know that all that is needed for them and supplied for them for their mission comes from submission under His mighty strong hand. And when I'm under His hand, I, I I move into that place where... I'm surrendered. And when you're surrendered, you don't need. That's where God's trying to get us. But don't quit giving those to him. I'm trying to get to a place, ladies and gentlemen, and it's been a stripping for me just to be a mouthpiece, just to be an observer. It was funny, Sunday night or Sunday morning, I was standing over here and Brother Jeff came and he said, there's somebody here. God spoke to me and said that he needed prayer. And so I laid hands on Brother Jeff and I prayed over him. And I said, now you go pray for him. Because it's not about me laying hands on you. It's not about anybody else laying hands on you. Now listen, when the anointing's on somebody, get underneath that. Let them lay hands on you. Because God's using them. But there's a flow that might go through one of them. And we've got to be attentive enough to know where the flow. When Caleb was in the flow Sunday, I knew it. Matter of fact, I turned to Steve and I said, he's in the flow, didn't I tell you that? And the next thing I knew, here's Caleb going, get in the flow, your healing's in the flow. I said, Because the Spirit is the same. We're different in our ways, but when you can connect all of us in the Spirit, 
Come on now. When your river starts converging with my river, ah, that's when the devil gets real nervous. He's even nervous right now because I feel something shifting right now. Somebody say, I'm in the flow. I want to be there in the river, wherever the river goes. I want to be there because there's healing in the river. Come on, there's abundance in the river. Your deliverance is in the river. And when it runs into dead things, dead religious things, it has to live. Come on. There was a dead sea, but the dead sea changed and was refreshed because there was a fresh river flowing. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. See, you got a fresh river to revive somebody who's been in this thing a long time, but they're not fruitful anymore because they've been stagnant and stale. But your river can ignite them. And come on, somebody. I need somebody to help me in this place because God wants to use your river to ignite their river your, your, your flame to ignite their flame when the river hit the sea it was alive so as much that there were fish the river will keep you. The river will sustain you. The river, the Holy Ghost will teach you. This current will guide you and lead you into all truth. And, 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 and he's looking for some radical believers again. Is there anybody who's like a John the Baptist? You're just radical. You'll just, you don't care. You're, you're just radical for Jesus. And you don't care what people think anymore. You're just saying, I want all that he has. I, I want to I wanna be swimming in his glory. I want to be under the spout where the glory is pouring out. I want to be where the blinded eyes are opening up. I want to be in smack dab in the middle of the fire falling from heaven. I, I want to be where they're rolling in the floor. I want to be, I want to see what God is doing. Listen, Sunday you remain because there was a river flowing in this place and that river is still flowing right now. All you got to do is step in. All you got to do is move while it's moving. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. I'm looking for a radical bunch of people. I'm looking for somebody who's still hungry and thirsty. Is there anybody said, I want his power. I want his presence. I'm passionately in pursuit of him. My intention is his intention. Be intentional in communion with the Holy Ghost. And when you're intentional in it, the Holy Ghost will get all over you and in you and change you and direct you and lead you and guide you. Somebody give God praise for the power and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody shout a minute. Somebody take 30 seconds and give him praise. Paul says in Ephesians 5, 15 through 21, it says, to see then that we walk circumspectually, meaning watchful and prudent and careful, not as fools. But as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. How many would agree with that? Therefore, do not be unwise. We cannot be unwise in this season. But understand that the will of the Lord is, and what it is, and do not be drunk with wine. Let's go ahead and say this. Do not be drunk with wine. Do not be drunk with the world. Do not be drunk with the pleasures of this world, in which is uh, this dispensation, which means wasted time on the pleasures of this world. How much time have we wasted on the pleasures of this world? How much time are we wasting pleasing ourselves and pleasing and, and doing what we want to do and, and feeling how we want to feel? And how much time are we wasting? And God's saying, I need you wise. I, I, need you, I need you to be watchful and I need you to be wise, not wasteful. He said, I need you to be watchful. I need you to, 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 to be focused on my ways and not the ways of this world, but to be uh, tuned in to the Spirit, speaking to one another as we did, as we do constantly in this house, speaking to one another in thanksgiving and in, in, in psalms and melodies and spiritual songs and singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks sometimes. I just seen if he's with me. Giving, thanksgiving, always. always. Always for some things. 
That means even the storms I'm in. That means even the sickness is trying to get on my body. I'm giving thanks anyway because it's an opportunity for him to show up and show out. Come on. It's an opportunity. You may be weary in your body, but it's an opportunity for God to get all over you tonight. Come on, somebody. The day might have been hell, but it's an opportunity for God to create a heavenly atmosphere because there's a river flowing in. I need somebody to help me in this place. There's a river flowing, and he wants you to step in. He wants you to know that there's an opportunity for him to make a way. Giving thanks always for all things to God our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Blessing the Lord at all times. His praise continually being in my mouth. The picture in Paul's writing is not a single encounter of his glory. But each moment being an encounter. Not just here but there. I'm going to say it like this. Here, there, and everywhere. An encounter. Somebody shout an encounter. How many want to see God encounters everywhere you look? So here's what we got to do to understand that He speaks to you in different forms. Sometimes it might be on a billboard somewhere. It might be on a speed sign. Oh, he crazy. Yeah, I'm one of them. I've become one of them. Because God will speak to me while I'm driving down the highway. How many believe he speaks to you? And then that river starts flowing. Next thing you know, I'm just, whoo. Holy Ghost starts moving in my vehicle. And the people next to me think I'm crazy and I about run them over. You know what I mean? And then tears start flowing. The next thing I know, I can't see what I'm doing, so I need to pull over and just take a run and fit around the car. I've been known to do it. Because God will speak through a song sometimes. God will speak through a billboard sign. God will speak through your brother and your sister. God will speak through a preacher. God will speak through a prophet. God will speak through a rooster. He'll provide for you with a fish sometime, just right out of the fish's mouth. You say, how do you know that? I read it. I read it. And he's not different than he was yesterday. He's the same. He's the same. I said he's the same. He's the same. He's peculiar. He's mysterious in all of his ways. And, and, and so we want everything figured out. But God's saying, you're a peculiar people and I'm a mysterious God and I want you to seek me and then you'll find me. I want you to search me out. There's treasure, there's hidden treasure that you haven't tapped into yet, but you have to want it so that he can... Re- uh, he wants to release it. There's angels that are excited for you to understand the mysteries of God. For me to understand the mysteries of God, the depths of God. How many would believe that there's depths in you that you haven't tapped into yet. How many know that there's a stretching going on on the inside of you because what you thought is you already had everything that you could contain but God said I want to stretch you out. There's some depths in you you haven't tapped. Come on somebody. He is stretching you. There's been a season of it. Lord he he dwells, the Bible said that in Psalms 91, one of my favorite scriptures, is he, he, he that dwells in the secret place shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. You are never called to live stale or stagnant spiritually. You're, you are called to live under the shadow of the Almighty, my God. The secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells means he who remains. To live as a resident. Keeping the attention directed toward the dimension of the Spirit. How do we do that? A relationship. I abide by my relationship with Him. The only way I can stay with Him is if I commune with Him. If I fellowship with Him. The only way I can understand the flow of the Spirit is if I know who He is and how He speaks. 
Keeping the attention directed toward the dimension of the Spirit through a relationship, abiding, staying with Him, and and because it is His Spirit that makes you, uh, it is His Spirit that makes you move. It's His Spirit that makes you open your mouth and even speak a word. It's His Spirit that speaks to you, and and so that you can speak to them. It's it's His Spirit, and 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 it's His Spirit that will come on you, and it's like you went into a phone booth and you come out as Superman. You know what I'm saying? It's only by His Spirit that you can do that. It's only by His Spirit that you can accomplish what you could not accomplish in the natural. It's only by His Spirit that you're as bold as a lion and you can look at a demonic spirit and say, come out in the name of Jesus. It's only by communion. It's only by relationship. It's only by sacrifice. It's His Spirit. There's a river flowing and the river is formed and the river is from relationship. Somebody say, the river flows from relationship. Ezekiel 47, 1 through 9, i got to get through this. Shows us a picture of the mighty river of God, the Holy Ghost, the anointing. It is ever deepening, just what I was just saying. It's ever deepening, and it's stretching wider. There's depths in you you haven't tapped into yet. There's a stretching going on. How many knows when you start eating a lot? There's a stretching going on. Your container gets a little bigger. Right? The waters will stretch you. They tell you don't drink the water until after you eat. Because the more you drink, my God. Ha ha. I'm going to keep drinking because I want to stretch out so much. That melt boy, when somebody pushes this belly, it's just Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. I'm just spitting water all over you. I'm spitting love all over you. I'm spitting joy. Come on, somebody. There's a water fountain on the inside of you. There's healing on the inside of you. There's deliverance on the inside of you. And somebody is waiting for you to be stretched. Somebody's waiting for you to tap into healing streams. You hadn't got there yet, but let me tell you something. Some of you are about to lay hands on those you've been designed to lay hands on. You're going to cast out devils. You're going to tread on scorpions and serpents. I need somebody to praise him right now. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Stir up your stagnant well right now. Get the flies away. God's got a plan. He's got a purpose. He's got a destiny. Your ministry is still alive and well. Everything the river touches has to live. Glory. The picture of Paul is saying, there's, there's a flow, there's a heavenly flow, and there's fresh heavenly wisdom, and there's fresh heavenly insight, and there's fresh empowerment, and, it's being, and you're being filled with the Spirit and led by the Spirit, filled with the Spirit and led by the Spirit. He who dwells means they remain. I'm in the secret place. I'm under the shadow of the Almighty, and I have a power working on the inside. And if I'm being stretched, and if I'm being deepened, then God is pouring more in. God is, there's room for more. Hallelujah. There's room for more. And Ezekiel is saying that the Holy Ghost, the anointing is ever deepening and ever stretching wider which means there are deeper depths in you and he is stretching you, he is stretching you to strengthen you because the power that you're about to possess, you're going to have to be stretched for it. You're going to have to be strengthened, so you got to be stretched and he's about to release from you things that you never thought, ask or imagine, things that you thought you could never do. You're about to do what they said you could not do and they're about to see what they said they would, you would never see. Then he brought back to the door. Let's go into the scripture 47 1. It says, Then he brought me back to the door. Somebody shout the door. He brought me back to the door, the temple, and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. From the front of the temple faced east. The water was flowing from under the right side. Somebody say the right side. It was flowing from the right side of the temple south of the altar. Somebody shout the altar. He brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gateway that faced east. And there was a water running out on the right side. Somebody say the right side. And when the man went out of the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits. And he brought me through the waters. The water came up to my ankles. 
Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters. The water came up to my knees. Again, he measured and 1,000 and brought me through the waters, came up to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000 and it was a river that I could not cross for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim. A river that could not be crossed. He said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. When I returned there along the bank of the river were very many trees on each side of the other. And he said to me, The water flows toward the eastern region, goes down in the valley, and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. Somebody shout, Healed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the river goes will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters go there for they will be healed and everything will, everything will live. Wherever the river goes, everything will live. Wherever, the, wherever you go, everything will live. My God. Your containers of His glory. Wherever you go, they will live. Wherever you go, they will be healed. Wherever you go, God's going to use you to get to them. Psalms 46, 4 says, There is a river, the streams thereof shall make glad the city of God. There's a river of joy in the city. Ezekiel 47 says that He brought me back to the door. Somebody shout the door. The door is the access of life. Y'all still here? The door is the access of life. The door is the access point. It's the focus. He is the Son of the living God. Somebody shout the door. The door is the access point. The door is the access of life. He is the Son of the living God. He is Jesus. It's all about Him. He's the door. He is the door. He is the Bible says He's the way. He's the truth and the life. Nobody can come to the Father except through the door. He's the access to your healing. Ha ha. He's the access to whatever you have need of tonight. So when we focus on Him, we have access to whatever we need. Come on, somebody. And everything flows from the communion and fellowship and the relationship we share with Jesus and the things that we share in His thoughts and the things that we allow Him to pour into us to transform us, to be renewed in our mind. By the watering of the Word, we receive revelation and anointing. I'm trying to get all this out tonight. We receive from Him as we give to him and and we receive and we give and we receive and we re and we give and so he's the door so we focus on who he is he's the door he's the access to whatever it is that we need and then John 7 37 on the last day the great day of the feast Jesus stood out and cried saying if anyone thirsts let him come to me and drink he who believes in me as the scripture has said out of his heart will flow rivers of living but this he uh, spoke concerning the spirit uh, whom those believe in him who receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. He hadn't been, been taken up yet so the Holy Spirit had not come. This is speaking of an abiding life. Staying, remaining, being committed. A life lived in connection and communion with Jesus Christ. John 15 speaks of the abiding life as of the vine and the branches. I'm the vine, you're the branches. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If anyone abides in me and I in him, and my words abide in you, and you shall bring forth fruit. How many wants to bring forth fruit? So we stay focused on the access of the fruit. Only The fruit can only come as we are surrendered to the access. I'm going to say that again. The fruit will only come as we are surrendered to Jesus. As we are surrendered to the anointed one, the anointing will come. 
As we are surrendered to uh, the God of provision, abundance will come. As we are surrendered to him in fellowship, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, and the goal is to release the presence of Jesus that produces the power of God, bringing forth fruit, healing, miracles, signs, wonders will follow those who believe the river comes from the house. Somebody say the house. How many knows that there's a river in this house corporately? But how many knows that you're a house? Do you know? You're a container of His glory. You're the house of God. Church is not here. Church is you. You're the house. Turn your neighbor and, 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 and shove them because I know they need it right now. I feel that in the atmosphere. Just give them a little nudge and say, you're the house. And you're the one that decides to host his glory. Come on, somebody. You, you are the one to decide that I want his supernatural flow. Then I want anything else. I want him. I, I want his river to flow on the inside of me that is issuing out. I want to be the house that is issuing out to bring forth healing. Come on, somebody. I want to be the house that the water's issuing out to bring forth healing, miracles, signs, and wonders, breakthroughs for other per people. I want to be the one one who is issuing out water that brings forth the harvest. I, I want to be a river filled with life. Is there anybody else who wants to be a river with me? Come on. I want to be a river that brings forth strength. I want to be a river that brings a breakthrough for somebody. I want to be a flow that brings miracle working power, living, giving streams, manifesting the kingdom of God on the inside that is very effective on the outside. Come on, somebody, where physical bodies are instantly healed and inner torment of others is true transformed as you transfer this water somebody come on not by might nor by power nor by human ability but by the spirit of God because the spirit of God is the power of God and it's able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything we could ever think ask or imagine I need the church in this house I need every house in this house to raise up right now in this moment and give God your best hallelujah give God your best praise stir up the gift on the inside issue some water out of you as we converge together as one mighty river that brings forth healing streams. Now, come on. Somebody lift your praise in this place. <laughs> Lifestyle of issuing his presence. Remain standing. Y'all getting too comfortable in this place. A lifestyle of prayer. Somebody say that with me. A lifestyle of prayer. A lifestyle of, of surrender. A lifestyle of hearing Him above all the noise. A lifestyle of seeing Him in the midst of all chaos. See, we magnify the wrong thing. Come on, somebody. We love magnifying our problems. We do. I think some of us, hey, come on. But what we magnify will manifest. Yeah. Yeah. Lifestyle of prayer and sanctification and holiness before God and ladies and gentlemen, the Bible declares to you and me, holiness. You can't gossip. Oh, Jesus, help me. You can't gossip and expect to see His glory. That's not holiness. It might make you feel better about yourself, but that's not holiness. God, why do you do this to me? Because he wants to get you to a place where there's no hindrance. You can't host his presence and be hindered by your flesh. Now let me say it like this so y'all not mad at me. I can't host his presence and be hindered by my flesh. And let me tell you something. Not every voice that comes in here all the time is the Holy Spirit. 
I can't operate under His glory if I'm operating in my flesh. Because this, if it's not lined up with this, you say, what are you talking about? Some of y'all say, you lost me. Your mind, your intellect, your will is not lined up with your rebirth, reborn spirit. Some of us listen to this so much more than we listen to this. And this, this right here is saying, stop. Stop doing that. You don't want to do it. There's times we get caught up in stuff we don't want to do. But then our flesh just, woo. It's like a sewage. Not a river. Isn't it amazing we can drink sewage water? And it's almost like you're revived just for a moment. Oh, I'm going somewhere. But when you get home, you lay in your bed and you're like, why did I do that? You know why? Because you wasn't born for sewage. You're not a septic tank. You're a hoster of His presence. You're to house Him. And He's saying, I want you to house me so as much that when people look at you, they only see me. Because what is in you will come out of you. We're the house corporately today, but we're also the house individually where rivers flow. Get this tonight, guys. There's a river in you. And don't wait for somebody else's river to move, my God, for you to move. Don't wait for somebody else's hallelujah before you shout hallelujah. Because your hallelujah may be the very one that brings breakthrough in the atmosphere. Get this, guys. I'm not saying... I'm not saying get up here and get in yourself. But let me tell you something. If you're saying hallelujahs, it's not yourself. Let's just be real. Now, if you get up here and do a bunch of spins and all that kind of stuff and the Holy Ghost ain't in it, that's another thing. But if God tells you to get up here and spin and roll on the floor, if He tells you to, I heard a preacher say, hang on the chandeliers, whatever He tells you to do. Those are the people He's looking for. He's looking for us to be those people. To host His presence. To house His river. And let it flow. The river individually flowing. Because you've... There's two reasons that the river flows. Here's number one, because you have come to the door. You've come to Christ. Secondly, the river flows because you've come to an altar. The place of death and resurrection. The place where sin dies and self is crucified. Somebody shout the altar. How many knows without it, we're done? Gosh, that's why I love to see y'all around this altar so much. Because there's something about you moving where the Spirit is moving. The altar. Somebody shout the altar. Without the altar, the church will falter. We need the door. Because if we don't have a door, we can't get into it. My God. Somebody tweet that. There's no access point if there's no door. But praise God, we have a door. Who went to a cross who shed His blood so that you could be healed tonight. Are you hearing me? So that you could be saved from your sins tonight. So you don't have to be poisoned by your past or what you did. Somebody shout the door. And there's an altar 
where it all lays down at the foot of what he did to make access for your deliverance. The door. Every head bowed, every eye closed for a moment. If you know how to pray, I need you to pray right now. If you have the Spirit of the living God on the inside you, begin to stir it right now. Stir it, stir it. Stir all the distractions out of your mind right now with the stirring of the waters. Only encourage yourself. Build yourself up. The Scripture talks about building yourself in the most holy faith. The lifestyle of prayer, the lifestyle of holiness. We flow in the Holy Ghost because when we receive the Holy Ghost, we come into fullness. Just like Jesus said in Luke 4, 18, He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach the deliverance of the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them who are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This is your jubilee. This is your acceptable year. He's already paid the price. He's already done everything that's needed. In Acts 10, 30, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him, the river was with him hallelujah the holy ghost is here with you the purpose the empowerment of god is here and 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 you to he wants you to carry on the gospel of what jesus started he wants you to carry it out yeah, declaring he was wounded for every transgression he was bruised for your iniquity the chastisement of your peace was upon him and by every one of those 39 stripes you can be healed in this place tonight The river reveals Christ. <laughs> the river reveals your healing. The river reveals your breakthrough. The Holy Ghost came to set on the on you on uh, set you on fire Hebrews 1:7 who maketh his angels ministering spirits Caleb already said this and his ministers flames of fire. The river came to set you free tonight. I said, the river's here to set you free tonight. The river's here to set you free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. John said, I baptize you with water of repentance, but he that's coming is mightier than I. I can't even carry his sandals. He's so mighty. And he's about to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So I want to ask you tonight, maybe there's somebody you've been dead and dry. You're like the, the, the Dead Sea. The same river is in you by the power of the Holy Ghost. If you're a Holy Ghost filled believer, the same river can be stirred. There may be some dead dry places in your life today. Maybe it's sickness, maybe it's finances, maybe it's your marriage and you've been stagnant and stale because nothing seems to be changing. Maybe it's your spiritual life. I'm here to tell you tonight that all you need is the river of God to break loose to you, in you, and through you. Paul said, stir up the gift on the inside. Well, I want you to think about that stirring water right now. Think about that. Matter of fact, with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to ask those who are on the prayer team, you can look this way. I need you to come at this time. I want to give an opportunity. As a matter of fact, those of you who are in your seats and you're, you're, you have the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. I need you to focus on the door right now. I need, I need you to stir up the water. I need you to stir up. I need you to stir up the water past all doubt right now. I need you to stir the water beyond doubt that there's healing and deliverance in this river tonight. 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 There's breakthrough in this river tonight. Not yesterday. Tonight. There's, 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 now is the time. Miracles, signs, and wonders in this river tonight. There's an anointing in this river to break the yokes in this place tonight. I need you to pray. Intercessors. 
begin to pray right now as the Spirit leads you to pray. Just begin to pray. Lord, we, we just uh, we pray over this sanctuary. God, we stir the waters on the inside. God, we stir up the water of joy, the water of peace, the water of healing. And God, I pray that as I release these people to move forward, that they will not only step in, but they will jump in, Lord. That they will step into a fresh flow. That they will step into a fresh anointing. Lord, as the prayer team lays hands on them, I ask that you will release the anointing to them. That you will give them everything that they are looking for. That they will jump in the river tonight and that you will take full control. And that you will carry them by the power of fresh anointing, a fresh flow, a fresh... Uh, that you will progress us, God, and move us beyond the banks, God, and move us beyond ourselves, Lord Jesus. That the Spirit of the Lord will begin to move on the inside. That the Spirit of the Lord will begin to move so as much that when we preach God that there's an anointing that breaks the yokes that there's an anointing to bring deliverance that there's an anointing to, to release the captives Lord that when we begin to witness God there's recovery of sight to the blind and that and you're setting at liberty those who are bruised Lord I ask right now that that acceptable year be released right now as we are praying those who are praying right now and agreeing with me right now just begin to stir it up matter of fact just go ahead and lift your hands right now and say Lord we surrender this flow all over this place as your eyes are closed uh, I'm going to ask you here in just a few moments a few questions but right now just begin to release as you lift your hands and surrender begin to stir up that anointing begin to stir up that river right now begin to stir up that living stream right now begin to stir up everything uh, that, 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 that used to be dead and stagnant now it's alive uh, because there is a stir going on begin to do what uh, Joel 20 that Jude 20 says building up yourself on the most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost uh, because I believe tonight that where the river flows uh, everything will live uh, in the name of Jesus come on lift your hands and begin to let the fruits of your lips bless him right now if it is you and you'd say I'm Maybe you'd say, I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. Or maybe you would say, I need strengthening in my spirit. Or maybe you would say, I need a healing tonight. Or somebody might need a financial breakthrough. Whatever it is that your need is, the river's flowing. But he's waiting on you to step in. So I want to ask you to step in tonight. If you would say, I need a breakthrough, I need a healing, I need a deliverance, I need a renewal in my mind, my thinking right now is not where it needs to be. If that's you, raise your hand and say, I need a breakthrough. Come on, if that's you, raise your hand. Anybody in the house, thank you for these hands, thank you for these hands. Anybody else? Maybe you're not where you need to be with Christ. Maybe there's somebody here who needs salvation. If that's you, would you raise your hand and say, I want to, I want to step in. I want to get ankle deep tonight. I want to step in to the salvation knowledge of Christ. I have felt conviction, and I want to step in to know Him. If that's you, raise your hand and say, that's me. Is there anybody that would like to know Jesus tonight? Maybe you once knew Him. You need a fresh relationship with Him, a fresh touch. Maybe your seeds have been dead. But he wants to restore it tonight. If that's you, raise your hand. Anybody? Amen. Maybe there's somebody else and you've just been barely in. In other words, you're still in control, struggling with temper, struggling with issues with anger and unforgiveness. Maybe you're in the waters, but you're still watching things that feed the old nature and still listening to things that stir the old desires and still living by the desire of flesh. In other words, that flesh still has a pull. If that's you, raise your hand right now and say, I want to change tonight. I want to, I want to go a little deeper with Him. I, I, I'm ready for these temptations to leave. I'm ready to be an overcomer. If that's you, would you raise your hand and say, I need to overcome some things in my life. Is there anybody in here? Thank you for this hand. Is there anybody else? Amen. Don't allow the enemy to muddy up your waters anymore. I'm asking you to step into the streams. 
Step into what God has for you tonight. So at the count of three, if you raise your hand, I want you to come to this altar. I'm only counting the three just to make you aware of when to step. And at the count of three, if you raise your hands and you say, I need a breakthrough, I need a financial miracle, I need a healing, I need my relationship renewed, I want you to move quickly. One, two, three. Come on, come on. Those of you that raise your hands. Matter of fact, why don't you do this? Those of you who are still sitting in your seats, look at about two or three people and ask them if they want to move, that you'll go with them. Ask them, say, hey, you need somebody to go with you? You need a move? You need God?